Hello. This video is about building an ultra precision voltage reference based on LTZ1000 chip by Linear Technology. This is a metrology grade voltage reference which can be used to calibrate lab gear including 8.5 digit multimeters. Of course, after the reference is thoroughly characterized and calibrated in some calibration lab. I am going to use the design from xdevs.com. The project name is KX Reference. The boards can be ordered from Osh Park, which is a PCB manufacturer. The minimum order is three boards. The cost is about $17 per board and free shipping. And here I have parts to populate just one board for now. The parts are quite expensive. The main part is LTZ1000 chip. There are two versions, a CH and ACH. I bought a cheaper one, which is CH, and it was about $46 from DigiKey. I also have precision op amps, some resistors, high um, quality film capacitors, and these critical uh, high precision foil resistors by Vichy. Maybe later I will build more references. It is always nice to be able to compare several references to have higher confidence, but uh, they are quite expensive. Total cost of all parts was more than $100. Uh, so let's just build one reference for now and try to characterize it. Here is the data sheet for LTZ1000 reference chip. And the main point here is uh, low noise and very high stability, both uh, long-term stability, which can be called aging, and the temperature stability. And notice that the accuracy is not even mentioned here. The output voltage is about 7 volts, perhaps closer to 7.2, and the actual voltage is not important at all. Here is what's inside of the chip, and the critical parts are this so-called buried Zener diode and a heater uh, to maintain a precise temperature right inside of the metal can. Here is the typical application circuit, and the KX reference project uh, follows this almost exactly. The parameters of the reference will depend not only on the LTZ1000 chip, but also on some components around it. And in particular, these five resistors mentioned here are critical. And uh, here we have information about uh, how much a 100 ppm change in the values of these resistors will contribute to the change of the output voltage. So uh, 100 ppm change in R1 will change the output by 1 ppm, so the change is attenuated 100 times. Uh, change in R2 uh, is attenuated even more, about uh, 300 times and change in R3 is attenuated even more, about 500 times. And uh, this is a voltage divider, uh, this R4 and R5. And the critical parameter is the uh, change in the ratio. And each 100 ppm of the change contributes 1 ppm uh, change to the output voltage, uh, so it is attenuated about 100 times. Here I have my precision resistors. This is our 120 ohm resistor. These are R2 and R3. 
I have 75k resistors, which is a bit higher than recommended 70k. But as I understand, up to 100k is fine. This is my voltage divider, which means I have both R4 and R5 in one package. And this is a better way of maintaining the ratio than individual resistors. Uh, this divider sets um, the temperature point inside of the LTZ1000 metal can. And I have 1K and 12.2K resistors, which is a bit a lower temperature point than 1K and 13K. Uh, I believe this sets a temperature point around uh, 45 degrees C, which should be okay, slightly on the lower side perhaps. But I heard that people even used 1K and 12K resistors, which sets even lower temperature point, and that worked fine. So, uh, the resistors should be stable uh, to, let's say, a few ppm a year, and uh, under 2 ppm uh, per degree C uh, temperature drift. And the resistors in one package uh, should track each other within 1.5 uh, ppm per degree C and also something like a few ppm a year aging. Uh, some people argue that uh, foil resistors are not the best way for this application. Uh, wire wound resistors have lower noise and perhaps they are right. However, I got these excellent resistors uh, for reasonable prices and uh, maybe not the best way, but certainly one of very good ways uh, should be good enough. All surface mount components are populated, except a few which I'm not going to populate. I'm not going to use temperature sensor here, LED here, and its current limiting resistor here. The trickiest part was soldering film capacitors, because it seems that the board was designed for smaller capacitors. The trickiest one was this, because it has a guard trace around one of the pads, so I had to put it on its side and it was populated the last of all four of the same type and if I knew beforehand I would put all of them the same way just for consistency and it might have been slightly easier in other places as well. And now it's time to solder the most critical through hole components. I'm going to use this clip which is supposed to be used on each leg as a heat sink during soldering to reduce thermal stress. Here I attached a twisted pair to the output, uh, unshielded for now, and I'm going to connect power through this Schottky diode for reverse polarity protection, just in case. Here is the result with a little piece of uh, heat shrink over this diode. Yes, I was careful not to blow hot air onto this board. I've done it by holding my soldering iron really close to the heat shrink, which is not very effective, uh, so perhaps it did not shrink all the way, but enough to keep it in place. 
ready for the first test. I set the power supply to 12 volts. Let's go. Aha, uh -huh. 7095 and going up as the reference is warming up. Let's wait for a while and see at what voltage it is going to stabilize. It settled quite quickly, in a minute or so, and it has been about 15 minutes or so, and it never moved since then. It's another day, and this thing is still sitting at the same voltage we have seen yesterday, which is a very good sign. I have changed the power supply voltage to 15 volts, just to see if that would affect the reference at all and it didn't. And by the way, the reference is drawing about 30 milliamps at steady state. I prepared this enclosure, which I bought on eBay, for just under five dollars delivered. And I also prepared this piece of foam, which is thick enough to match the height of the components on the board almost exactly and I cut out this hole for the board in it and I prepared these three pieces of padding to add on top and on the bottom so the whole sandwich fits into this enclosure very nicely. I added this grounding wire, which I will fit under one of the screws. Knots for strain relief. I'm not going to drill anything yet. Uh, maybe later I will install good quality binding posts or something like that. Or maybe I even will add a uh, circuit to scale this to 10 volts, which will take another enclosure. I'm not sure yet. This should be a good enough temporary solution for now. Must be ready for serious measurements. Again, it settled on the same value in less than a minute. I was preparing my equipment to log the voltage using both Hewlett Packard meter and uh, Datron 1071 and I noticed that uh, when I connect the second meter the voltage drops a little bit. Here is the reference and I'm using this uh, power supply at the moment instead of a big and noisy lab supply and the reference is connected to the Hewlett Packard meter and this is from Datron. We are reading 48 to 49 at the moment. And let's see what happens when I connect this. So now we are reading 47 to 48. A tiny drop, about one count. And one count now is about 1.4 ppm. And we don't have enough resolution now to measure it better. And I tried the opposite as well. I connected the reference to the Datron meter and then connected the Hewlett Packard meter and I saw a similar drop. I think it is normal. Meters do have uh, tiny effects on circuits and uh, I could enable the high input impedance mode in this Hewlett Packard meter. I think it has one. But I doubt Datron has such a mode. And I don't really have to use both meters, but I wanted to compare the stability of the meters at the same time. So let's not worry about this for now. 
for now we should be concerned with uh, stability, not with accuracy. Here is this drop measured by Hewitt Packard meter. At this point I connected that run and we have two divisions here corresponding to one count on the meter. So the drop was uh, less than one count. Let's call it one ppm. Here I have data for about uh, 46 hours, let's say. This is Datron, and this is Hewlett Packard, and this is ambient temperature. The scale here is 20 microvolts per division, which is about 2.8 ppm. And everything looks quite good, except this glitch here, and this small glitch here. Let's have a look at this one. It seems like something happened at this point, and it is smoothed by Datron because it is running 16 point moving average, which is necessary to get 7 digits out of it. And according to Hewlett Packard, the voltage dropped uh, about a division, which is almost 3 ppm and then partially recovered and stayed lower, about a ppm lower, for about two hours before recovering all the way for a while, but then went down again about a ppm for another two hours or so. And there is this small glitch, which is not visible by Datron, I suppose because of the moving average, and it seems like one erratic measurement. And something happened here as well. And I wonder what would be the reason for all this. I have all this equipment plugged into an interruptible power supply, so I doubt this is some sort of uh, power glitch. Uh, so let's move this down a bit so we can see that Tron's measurements all the way and correlate with temperature. By the way, this happened during this steep drop of the temperature. At this point I came back uh, from work and let uh, some fresh air in. I opened the door and the temperature dropped more than 3 degrees in, uh, let's say, 2 hours. And there is some time lag, of course, so I wonder if this is related somehow. So, let's look at the temperature stability. It seems like Hewlett Packard is very stable, but Datron moves a bit. And it moved from this lowest point, which corresponds to this lowest point um, of the temperature, with some time lag, uh, to this highest point. And the difference is, uh, let's say, 5 ppm or so. And the difference in temperature is about 6 degrees. So 5 ppm over 6 degrees is about 0.8 um, ppm per degree, which is uh, not bad at all, but Hewlett Packard seems to be more stable. So, after about a couple of days, we are still reading the same voltage, which is great. I will keep the reference powered up for at least a few months before it would make sense to find someone with a better meter to calibrate it. I am not sure I will be able to log the data all that time. I will need to move the equipment uh, to make room for other projects uh, in my small lab and I will need to uh, reboot the computer and such. Uh, but I will certainly check from time to time and perhaps keep some records about uh, my measurements. So I really hope it was an interesting project uh, for you and thank you very much for watching. Bye!